Hi folks, it's Andy. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Um, bit of a different video for you today. Um, quite a few people have been asking for me to make a video about the Nihon Kendo Kata or Kendo Kata. Um, and I've really wanted to do that for some time. Um, but obviously, um, if you're watching this in the future, we're filming this in May 2020. Um, and the UK is still in a kind of lockdown due to the sort of international um, pandemic thing that's going on. So... Um, I haven't been able to film some new content for it, which is what I would have really liked to have done. And I will do as soon as I'm able to, I'll actually film a proper video, um, sort of give more instruction about the Kendall Kata. But in the meantime, I thought this would be an interesting thing to do. Um, I found this video, um, it's reasonably recent. I think it's from just a few months ago, probably at the beginning of the year, um, where um, my wife and I demonstrated kata um, for some of the newer people um, at our dojo. Um, however, uh, just first off, uh, before we kind of delve into it too much, um, it's just an informal demonstration, really just to show new people, oh, this is what the kendo kata looks like. We've not been super formal about it. We're not too strict uh, on all of the protocols and stuff like that. It's not the same as if I was demonstrating it um, at a taikai or something like that, for example. Um, there's mistakes that we both made. Um, like I said, if I was filming a proper instructional piece, you know, normally I'd have the chance to go back and reshoot and stuff like that. Bits where I cut sort of made mistakes and, and, and forgot bits and stuff like that. Um, but, um, you know, I'm not perfect. And this is a, uh, this is a, just a video um, that I got my 12-year-old uh, daughter to film. Um, <laughs> so it's not perfect cam camera angles either, uh, with no rehearsals, no refilming or anything like that. So there are a few mistakes, uh, which we'll highlight as we go along. Um, so what I thought we'd do is we could sort of watch through it um, and um, we'll watch each kata uh, and then we'll go through uh, each of the points um, of uh, each specific kata um, We'll go through them all one at a time, uh, if that makes sense. Okay, um, before we jump in, um, don't forget um, to support the channel by shopping at kendostar.com. That's my website, of course, that sells amazing, fantastic, wonderful kendo equipment. That is um, what how this channel exists. Um, if these videos um, that come to you absolutely free uh, bring you any uh, value whatsoever, um, then please do make sure that you're doing your kendo shopping at kendostar.com. Dot com. Uh, it really is a fantastic place to shop. Of course, I would say that. You don't have to take my word for it, though. If you look at any of our reviews, you'll see that we are the highest rated Kendo shop on the internet. So get over to kendostar.com. So with that being said, um, I think it's quite obvious. I'm on the right here. My wife, Miyuki, is on the left. Um, Miyuki is uh, portraying the role of Uchitachi, and I am uh, playing the role of Shitachi. If you're new to Kendo Kata, by the way, um, basically um, the uh, Uchitachi is considered the teacher's role um, and the Shitachi is considered the student's role. Um, so traditionally when Kata was performed um, in place of kind of armoured training, um, that would be kind of the roles that each would take. Um, and in general, uh, the Shitachi follows the movements of the Uchitachi. So we'll break them down one at a time afterwards. Okay, so that's number one. That's Ipponme, okay? Number one. Okay, there's ten of these forms. So, let's break it down. Okay, first thing. Uchitachi steps forward on the left foot and goes to left jordan no kamae. Okay? Like I said, we're going to do a more in-depth instructional video about all of these things uh, at a later date, but for now, let's stick with this, all right? Um, and the shitachi in response to that left jordan goes to right jordan, okay? So the left jordan, they step through on the left leg, okay? They go to a slightly hand me position, which means they're slightly side on, they're not straight on like you are in chudan, they're slightly side on, which is why their sword remains, the left hand stays in the middle and that's why their sword goes off slightly diagonally. Um, well, it's like 45 degrees almost actually. It goes off diagonally uh, this way, okay? The Uchitachi remains uh, straight and they simply raise their arms above their head to right Jordan. 
Take three steps in, starting with our front foot. And what's important here is the ma'ai, or the distance, okay? It has to be a distance where the uh, uchitachi is able to reach and strike through the uh, uchitachi's hands and into their head, hoping to cut right through, all the way down to the bottom here, um, by stepping through on the right leg, okay? So obviously she just swung the sword down here, probably wouldn't reach, but she's gonna step through on her right leg to give her extra distance and cut all the way through me here. All right, and I want her to do that. As Shitachi, I want her to do that. I'm not tentative here. I'm inviting of this, all right? Because my plan is, as we saw before, is to step back, uh, raise my hands out of the way, let the sword pass, and then return with a strike to the head, okay? Now, uh, I could do with improving my footwork here. My feet are probably a little bit too far apart um, for my own liking, okay? I should probably bring uh, that left foot up a little bit more um, and make... Um, that heel come down a little bit, um, it's a little bit too high. Okay, so there's there's a point that I would definitely like to improve on my own um, part. Okay, so we saw that the Uchitachi steps forward, cuts and cries, yeah, okay. I, uh, the Uchitachi steps backwards of the left and then right using Okuriyashi, left and then right, lifts their hands out the way and lets the sword pass in front of them. It's a Nukiwaza, okay? And then steps forward right, then left again with Okuriyashi and strikes in a men strike to the head, bam, here, and cries, tall, okay? Tall. <gasps> this way, okay? So, a um, couple of points that we're going to look at here that are super important just go back in slow motion here's one common mistake that we often see um and my wife's got this correct here is after stepping he through here watch the watch the left leg here so it comes up there okay there's a it, it has to come up you can't leave the left leg as you step step through as you step through with the right leg you step through and then the left leg comes up behind it with hikitsukeashi okay it, it comes up behind it it doesn't just stay still okay can you see that how there it just, it, it comes in, all right? That's important. Now, what she does need to improve a little bit, though, is she just needs to break that posture a little bit more. The Uchitachi is, is really throwing everything into this cut, and they actually break their posture slightly. So they're actually leaning forward slightly from the hips at the end of this cut, um, which uh, is a little bit unnatural, of course, to experience Kendoka, uh, which is, I think, why... Uh, my wife obviously st struggles with that, has forgotten that there. So that is one thing uh, that you have to be careful of. Then what I did um, as the Shitachi, um, we'll just go back and watch that. See how the hands come back as I step back. Then right, left, and we make a strike to the men. And what's important here, what we're looking for here is a strike with the monouchi. The monouchi of the sword, all right? You can't strike with this part of the sword. It's got to be the top third of the sword here. Okay, then the Shitachi takes a step back, a small step back, and I immediately drop the sword in front of their face here and express Zanshin, okay, Zanshin. You cannot attack me, okay? Move and I'll kill you is the kind of feeling. Then, we're going in slow motion here, the Uchitachi takes another step, okay? Now here's a mistake on my part here actually. I've preempted her a little bit, all right? Now it's not so obvious in full time, but I've preempted her movement. The Uchitachi is supposed to move her first here. She takes another step back. See how I've moved first there? Slightly preempting, it's not great. Uh, <laughs> she takes a, a larger step back and I step forward. I step forward on my left foot and raise my hands up to left jaw down the same position that she was in in the beginning, all right? And she's correct, she will have corrected her posture by now. So she's now in the right position, okay? Then after a short pause here, there's a connection still. This is Zanshin still, okay? If you move, I can still cut. She slowly starts to bring the sword back up to Chudan, okay? As asking in a way to uh, return um, to the beginning, regain control of the kata in a way. Um, and in response to that, I also step backwards, back to Chudan, and we meet at the 
basically the Yokote distance are a little bit close actually here, but this is this is pretty much acceptable. Okay, so on the on the Bokuto here, you see how it's sort of shaved here like that. That's called the Yokote. The idea is is that, that they're supposed to be sort of touching. Okay, so um, it would be even better if we were slightly like that much further apart here, but it's difficult to judge. It's not the end of the world. Okay, and that is kata number one. I think I covered everything. <laughs> So next is kata number two, nihonme, nihonme. Okay, that's it. So this is this is quite a simple kata. Um, I'd say it's much simpler than the first one. This time we come together in ai chudan. We're both in chudan. Okay. And this time we're at a little bit of a closer distance than the Yokote distance. I'm at a distance where it's probably a little bit far for her to comfortably strike at my men, but it is a comfortable distance to, for her to strike at Kote. I also immediately make sure that as soon as we make contact, I put a little bit of uh, pressure onto her sword to, to take the center. In a way, I'm kind of inviting her to strike at my Kote, okay? And the Uchitachi, actually responds to that by making a large swing, but without bringing the sword behind their head here. Okay, they make a large swing uh, and they strike towards my kote. In response, from my left foot, I step out diagonally backwards to the left and I drop my hands out of the way here, okay? You see how she's made an accurate strike to the kote, the sword's not too low. If the sword's too low, my retaliation strike is not going to be accurate, all right? So she's given me a target to strike at. I've moved out diagonally to the left, and I've dropped my sword down basically to Gedan. Um, and I make a, a large swing as well for kote, okay? But, again, I mustn't bring the sword behind my head here, which is a common mistake, all right? And I... I've, I've taken a step diagonally backwards, so I take a small step forwards as I strike, okay, with for kote, okay, and I, I strike the kote. And what's important, it's hard to see on this video, but my sword is still pointed at the center of her body, okay, it's not pointed out towards the window over there, it's pointed at the center of her body, okay, so I've still got control of the situation, okay, and I'm, again, that left foot must come up behind as I complete the strike here, okay? After this expression of Zanshin, the Uchitachi takes a step back to the starting position and I return by taking a step to my right. My sword comes over the top of hers and we adjust mutually to finish at the Yokote distance. Okay, very straightforward, uh, simple kata, um, and that's how it's done. Okay, number three, sanbon me. This is a tough one. <laughs> Okay, so let's go back over that one. Number three. So from here, from the Chudan position, the Utsutachi goes to Gedan. Okay, they drop the, sh the sword, the tip of the sword, a couple of two or three centimeters below the knee level. Okay, below the knee level. It must be low enough. And in response, the Shitachi matches that. They take three steps together. Now here's here's a point that people often get wrong in my book. They often step too close together and they start the, the, the bokuto crossing here. When actually, when, because they curve, when you come up to, to the I Chudan, now they both raise up to I Chudan here, both raise up to Chudan. See how we're now crossing? Um, yeah, we're already crossing now, yeah? So don't need to be crossing at the get down position. Once we reach the Chudan position, the Uchitachi, using Okuriashi, steps forward and makes a tsuki strike, a thrust, by turning the hands over this way, this way, okay, 
um, to my uh, solar plexus area, okay? In response, I step back from my left leg with okuriyashi and I defend from the ski by turning my hands over. I'm not sure if you can see on this camera. I turn my hands over this way to um, negate that thrust and take their sword out of my body line. Then immediately with okuriyashi, respond with a thrust of my own. Of my own, okay? In response to that thrust, the Uchitachi steps back, but with Ayumiyashi, okay? They step back, crossing with their right leg. Uh, their right foot goes back, yeah? And their wrists come under, and she twists her hips slightly to deflect my return thrust, okay? Then, the next one is a step forward. This is what's difficult about this one, is the, the footwork, okay? So now, as Uchitachi... Although the first ski was with Okuriyashi, the next one is with Ayumiyashi. My left foot comes forward and I step forward with a strong semi. This is not a strike, it's not a thrust, okay? This is, this is like a semi, okay? And the uh, Uchitachi responds in the same way, stepping back again by crossing their feet, bringing their uh, wrists underneath again and uh, deflecting, control, trying to control my sword once again. However, I continue coming forward, okay? And this pressure forces the uh, Uchitachi to basically um, yield uh, to, to my pressure. They uh, remove their, their Kamae, they go to the Kamae Otoku position this way. Not Kamae Otoku, but it's like kind of, um, they just, it's Mugamae, it's no Kamae out this way. And I make three steps forward with Ayumiyashi, okay? And it's difficult because the footwork has to be correct, yeah? So for me, let's we're gonna spend a bit of time on this one because it's an important one, all right? It, here's where it's difficult. Let's get right to the beginning of this. So let's start with Uchitachi's, okay? Let's start with Uchitachi's footwork. They go, just, just looking at the footwork here, okay? Right, left, then, Right comes back, then left comes back. And this is where people get confused now because people want to move their right foot back. But the left foot moves next. Left, right, left. Okay, leaving the right foot in front. Okay, this is the correct way to do this. Okay, now if we just zoom back there, we'll just go back here. Where are we? Here we are. Okay. For the shitachi, it's left, right with okuriyashi. Then right, left. Then left comes through. Right comes through. Left, right. This way. Okay? And again, so we're both ending here with the right foot forward. Okay? So this is a difficult part of this kata. It's really hard for the footwork. Next, um, as I come forward, as the shitachi comes forward, just rewind a little bit here, okay? As I come forward with these three steps, two, three, I start to raise my sword up to the face area of the uchitachi, okay? And express dancing here, okay? Then after a short pause, the uchitachi begins to regain two dan no kamae. As this starts to come up, I then return to the center Starting with the left leg, okay? Left, right, left next, right, and then finally left, and we'll be back where we started from, okay? And Uchitachi follows using the same Ayumiyashi, okay? So we end up in the same position, okay? It's a really tough kata. It's a really tough one. It's probably the hardest one, all right? Um, but it's all about getting that footwork right. And what's hard is doing all that footwork on top of doing all this twisty stuff with the bokken, right? Um, it's just a case of practice, all right? Um, it's just a case of practice and repetition. Next. Number four.
So, here, the Utsutachi goes to Hasso no Kamae. Okay? They go to Hasso no Kamae. Uh, let's just watch it through, actually. Sorry, I'm jumping the gun. We'll watch, watch it through and then we'll, we'll, we'll go through it uh, bit by bit. There we go, done. Okay, it's quite a short kata, but it's quite a complicated one in itself. Okay, so as I said, the Uchitachi assumes, it looks like they're going up to Jordan, but they assume Hasso no Kamae, okay? And in response, the Shitachi goes up and they bring the Bokuto past their mouth and they go to Wakigamae, Wakigamae, the swords behind them, okay? This way. One, two, three, and we take three tentative steps together, all right? So we take three tentative steps. These are not large steps. So there's quite a large distance between us here. You can see that, there's quite a large distance between us. Then, the Uchitachi goes to strike, okay? Goes to strike, they raise a sword to Jordan. And in response, I raise my sword to Jordan, and we both step through and make Ayuchi, okay? Ayuchi. I mean, this way. And this position is called Kiri Musubi. Okay, so the swords are tied together. Bam! They tie together here. And there's pressure against the swords together, both here, as we both revert to Chudan. Okay, we both revert to Chudan. Okay? In the past, you used to make long. So if you watch an older Kata video, you'll see that they. Um, make larger steps together, and then at this point, there's a dif distinctive step back from the shitachi, uh, uh, or from the uchitachi, sorry. Uh, there's a distinctive uh, step back before the next step. That doesn't happen in this one, okay? That doesn't happen anymore. They took that out, all right? Um, so unless you end up very close, if you end up too close, then it's acceptable for you to adjust the distance, all right? But you're not, it's better not to, okay? We revert to chudan. All right, and then the Uchitachi steps forward with Okuriyashi and makes a ski thrust to my right lung. Okay, the aiming here. All right, here this way. And what I do is I uh, use a technique called Ukenagashi where I bring the sword this way and I use the edge of the sword this way. <laughs> this way to deflect that tsuki, okay? And then I return with a strike to the men, okay? And what's really important here is the shitachi doesn't break posture massively, but they keep their eye, well, they do break posture actually, so she's not done that. She's supposed to break posture a bit more than she has done. Not too much, but they're supposed to break posture slightly. However, they are supposed to keep eye contact and she has done that. So you keep your eyes, your face, not just your eyes, but your face, you must face towards uh, the shitachi when doing this, okay? And that presents the target, okay? Then from here, the shitachi returns to the uh, starting position. Sometimes you can do in one step, sometimes it takes two steps, but it's okay. it doesn't matter either way. The shitachi then um, returns by stepping to the right because I came off to the left as I did that deflection um, and we return to the starting position, okay? At the yokote distance and that's it. Here's a mistake that I just made. Here's a mistake I just made. Let's, uh, this, this is a bad mistake, all right? So don't do this, okay? Don't let your feet lift up this way. You should keep your toes down, all right? So don't do that. <laughs> Lazy. Okay, so uh, let's watch it first and we'll go through after. Okay, so that's number five, Gohon Me. So in this one, 
in this one that Uchitachi goes through to left Jordan much in a similar way to how they did in the first kata. In response to that, the Uchitachi um, does the Chudan in response to Jordan. Okay, it's called Chudan in response to Jordan. Jordan ni taisuru Chudan no kamae, it's what it's called. So, uh, basically this sword is pointed, you can't see very well from this angle, but it's not in the middle, it's pointed out slightly this way to, or, towards the left wrist. Okay? Three steps in, and this time, the Uchitachi makes a strike very similar to the how they do in the first kata. However, it's a men's strike. It's a men's strike, okay? It's not a full cut through, it's a strike to the men. And because it's deflected with suriyage from the shitachi, they instantly relax, okay? And let the sword fall. They don't break the posture like they're supposed to in the first one, okay? Now in response to that men's strike, I make a, a the uchitachi, uh, shitachi, sorry, makes the suriyage while stepping backwards with okuriyashi. Suriyage, okay? This is an incorrect position, all right? So this is where I need to improve, okay? Like I said, I make mistakes too. So try not to let the sword fall behind here. It should come up this way and not backwards this way, all right? So this is not good, perfect technique for me, all right? Um, and then after making the Suriyage upwards this way, step in right, left, and strike men, okay? And you must make sure, again, you strike with the Mono Uchi. Okay, it's very easy to misjudge the distance here. This time though, okay, now in kata number one, do you remember the Uchitachi took a step back and I dropped down for Zanshin? That isn't what happens here. Here, the um, Uchitachi moves to left Jordan by drawing the sword down for Zanshin in front of the face and then straight up to Jordan here by stepping backwards, okay? left Jordan here, and there's Zanshin here, and then they step back on the right foot, and they both return to Chudan together. However, if we stay where we are now, we're well off center from where we started from. So, the Uchitachi takes three steps backwards, starting with the left foot, and the Shitachi follows, starting with the right foot, with Ayumiashi left, right, left and you have to judge this together whilst keeping contact with the swords yeah um, and return to the starting position okay and that's cut on number five <clears throat> need to work on that suriyage <laughs> so uh let's watch this one through i keep wanting to do the uh commentary straight away Okay, so this is a subtle kata, has a lot of subtle movements. Okay, so this is a unique kata in a way. It's not unique, but it's it, it, it's a bit special because in this kata, the shitachi moves first. The shitachi goes to gedan, okay? And the shitachi remains in chudan. They take three steps together, and then as soon as they arrive here, the Shitachi starts to raise to Chudan, but by press, like kind of giving pressure towards the wrists from below. Okay, so looking as if either I'm going to come up to stab at the abdomen or I'm going to come up to attack the kote from below. Okay, and in response to that, the and she hasn't done this actually, so this is a point where Miyuki needs to improve a bit, but actually, the um, the Uchitachi, um is supposed to try to up, kind of press that, okay? So their sword kind of dips slightly to, to kind of meet it in a way. And then just before they meet, she gives up on that idea and she retreats to left Jordan, okay? And in response to that left Jordan, I'm not letting her get away, so I take a step forward and, and make the Chudan against left Jordan like we did in the previous kata. So I'm still piling the pressure on. There's, it's really about putting pressure on. And the um, the Uchitachi is really kind of feeling the strain of this kata. So she returns to Chudan. And 
I'm already in a dangerous distance for her. So reluctantly, she makes a panicked strike towards Kote. Okay, a small chop towards Kote in a way. Okay, and by stepping out to the left with diagonally with my left foot, I make again suriage. Okay, suriage, and I return with the strike to the Kote as well. Okay. After this strike, she retreats and makes this kind of, uh, I don't know what the word for it is, but again, it's a kind of Mugamae posture where she is, her body is facing away from me here. All right. Her body must be facing away from me and she's kind of given up. She's in a position of surrender. All right. But her face is turned towards me. In response to that, I step forward on my left leg and take left Jordan. Okay, left jaw down. Then she starts to return to the Chudan, starts to come back to the uh, original position, and I return to the uh, original position so that we arrive there together. Not a perfect example of that kata, unfortunately, but it's not. The, the, that's the nature of this video, I'm afraid. <laughs> we'll do a better one uh, later, I promise. So number seven, Nana Hombe. Okay, so that's number seven, okay? That's the last of the tachi forms, the, the long sword forms. So in this one, we both start in Chudan, in Ai Chudan. We come to uh, this position and the Utsutachi makes a lunge forward with strong semi. It's like a kind of, um, uh, it's like an attack with the semi as much as it is with the sword. Okay, so she lunges forward here with a kind of ski. And I take a step back and I deflect that with my sword, slightly turning my hands um, this way. And as soon as we return to the Chudan no Kamai here, the Uchitachi makes a big strike by stepping through on the left foot and then the right foot to try and cut me in half. Okay? One. Now, she shouldn't bring the sword this far back. Okay? So this is, this is a point for her to learn on. All right? And my response to that is a strike to the door here. Okay? Now, I'm quite far away because I don't want to hit her with the book door. You're not supposed to touch her with the book door. Okay. Um, and I take a step to my right as I strike to the door. Okay. This way on the left, as the left foot comes through, I drop down onto my knee this way after striking. And basically, uh, I never take my eyes off her. All right. Now, She's made a slight mistake here in that she's kind of kept eye contact with me. She does break eye contact for a moment. I don't, all right? I keep my eyes on her, but the Uchitachi actually breaks eye contact for a moment, okay? Then, after striking, what, what should happen here, and this is what's kind of, we've kind of messed it up a little bit, is after the Uchitachi makes the strike here, oh, they realize they've been struck, and then they look around this way to the Uchitachi. Yeah, this way. Oh, this way, like that. Okay. And at that moment, when I when they look round, I immediately assume zanshin by taking wakigamae. Okay. Now, what's important here is the utsutachi. They make that strike and they look round. They don't take wakigamae. This is a common mistake. Is that people at this point the utsutachi will cut here and as they look round, they'll take wakigamae like that. That isn't correct. That isn't what happens, all right? The shitachi takes wakigamae, like I did here, takes wakigamae. Then we assume I chudan, all right? This way. Like that, okay? She takes a step back, which makes me stand up. And then using um, ayumi ashi, crossing footwork, we return to the center line, the beginning position, okay?
And that's number seven. That's all of the, the tachi forms, the long sword forms. So we perform songkyo there, and the shitachi goes to switch out to the kotachi, the shorter sword. We'll just forward that along a little bit because it's a bit boring watching me just swap my swords over. So there we go. There we go. So we come back. So the shitachi now is using the kotachi, the short sword. So these are often referred to kata 8, 9 and 10, but they're actually called kotachi, kotachi no kata 1, 2 and 3. So it's kata 1, two and, 1 to 7 and then 1, 2 and 3. Okay, so that was ippon me, kotachi no kata ippon me, okay? So, in this, in this kata, the uchitachi goes to left jodan, as they've done a few times now. And in response, I make a full hand me, side on uh, stance, and I point the sword uh, towards the face area of... Um, the Utsutachi, and it's slightly turned out this way, slightly turned this way. Can you see that? Don't know. Slightly. Not, not, not like this, just slightly this way, okay? So the sort of face area. Now, this happens quick. We take three steps in, but as soon as we arrive at distance, Utsutachi immediately makes his full strike by stepping through just the same as in kata number one, right? You don't get there and then start this. It happens as soon as they're in distance. And the reason for that is because if you, the the point of this kata is that the uchitachi doesn't want the uh, shitachi to get close because they've got the short sword, right? They don't want to get into the eating me distance it's called, all right? So she immediately makes a strike here. Now I step out on my right foot diagonally, okay, using a kind of hirakiyashi motion, and I turn the sword and I block with the uh, shinogi of the sword, the side of the sword, here in a kind of ukenagashi uh, deflection, this way, in hanmi position, and I make a strike with my arm out extended here to the men, okay? Bam, like that, okay? I don't touch her, I'm close, but I don't touch her, okay? And then I take a step back, left, right, to Jordan, okay? The Jordan position. Probably do with the Ken being a little bit high. Probably should be in this position rather than here, okay? It's a little bit, a little bit too flat. Her body is straight, but her face is facing me, okay? Then... She turns to face me, resumes the chudan no kamae, and I take a small step back and meet her in chudan no kamae. Then I've come quite a far way out, probably further out than I needed to. So I'm probably going to need to take a couple of steps back to the beginning. Um, or am I? I made it in one, okay? Uh, <laughs> I take a step back to the center line. If you come too far across when you do that deflection, it's acceptable to take two steps when you return to the beginning position. <laughs> she made a mistake there where she went to go, she, she went to go to Songkyo. <coughs> Forgot there's two more kata. kata. <laughs> so number two. Okay, so number two, and yeah, this is not a perfect example, if I'm honest, but number two, the Utsutachi makes the Gedan no Kamae, okay, it's the same as Kata number three, Gedan no Kamae, okay, and in response to that, in response to that, the Shitachi again makes the Hanmi position, but this time the sword's lower and it's around the abdomen level, okay, around the stomach level. Take three steps in, and I press from above to uh, prevent this sword coming up and stabbing me, okay? Once she realizes she hasn't got a route that way, she steps straight back to wakigamae, wakigamae here, okay? 
and I take a step in and threaten towards her face straight away and again apply semi. So much like kata number six here in that she um, is re reluctantly under pressure to make a movement. So she immediately brings the sword overhead, steps through on the right to strike th through this way. And in response to that, I make an uke nagashi again, but this time stepping with my left, left uh, for hirakiyashi. Okay, and again, I'm blocking on the side of the sword, the shinogi, I'm not blocking on the edge to edge. This way, and I make a strike. Again, it's like a men's strike, but it's a little bit kind of, it's like here rather than what you would do the shinai. Okay, but again, my arm is outstretched straight. I bring the sword to my hip to threaten for Zanshin. You can't see very well on this side. And I take hold of her arm this way, okay, uh, to control her. Make sure that I'm keeping control and I have asserted my victory. Then after a short pause, we return to the, uh, the starting position. Okay, and next is number three, uh, which is the last one. I just made a mistake again. <laughs> it's not a great angle to see this cut off from, but uh, it's not it's not the end of the world. So So here, much like in kata number six, we just watch the shitachi here. The shitachi takes a kind of gedan posture. Okay, a get on posture like this. Um, my fingers should be together. This gap should not exist in my fingers here. So that's wrong. Okay, uh, Miyuki kind of uh, messed up there and thought that she was already able to move. She forgot that I had to take that uh, posture, but it's, it's not the end of the world. So she kind of second guessed herself a bit. Um, then once we're in this position, we take three steps in, but one, two, again, the Uchitachi is not up for letting the touchy close to them all right so on the third step <clears throat> they're gonna make this men strike men like that and i'm gonna bring my kodachi straight up this way to uh defend it okay so i take it I, I use the kodachi straight away bam this way to defend it and then i throw it away to my left okay diagonally 45 degrees bam that way okay Then <clears throat> I uh, this is she from that position the uchitachi <clears throat> excuse me the uchitachi from that position brings the sword around this way and makes a strike at my door on the right side. So I step forward and I bring the kotachi this way. Okay, I'm not sure if you can get that on the camera, but I bring it this way to my hip, bam like that to block uh, that. Okay. And then I bring the sword up to the tsuba of her uh, bokuto. I turn turn my wrist, so I blocked it out that way. So the sword, the blade was facing away from me when I blocked that door. And then I br turn it this way as I bring it up to her tsuba and ha to her tsuba of her sword, and and I take hold of her elbow from below this way. So I'm pressing slightly from above uh, on her bokuto. Or lifting her elbow from below this way. So we're creating creating a point of leverage here where she's stuck and she can't get at me. Okay. And here's another point where people mess up the footwork. All right. It's tempting, especially for the uh, Uchitachi to step back with the right leg. But they step back with the left leg. Okay. Uh, sorry. With the, they want to step with their left leg because that's what's in front. But they step back with their right leg. Their right legs. We're going to move now diagonally. Um forward for the shitachi and backwards for the uchitachi, okay? And for the uchitachi, uh, they step backwards with the right leg and the shitachi steps forward with the left leg. So we're in unison. One, and with next is right, and then this way. See how we're in unison there? So if, if you mess that up, you start standing on each other's toes. So you have to get that one right, okay? <laughs> Then once we're there, I bring the sword back. You can't see this, not a great angle, but you bring, I bring the sword back to my hip to express that zanshin. 
After a short pause, after a short pause, we return to the beginning position and that's the end of the kata. Okay, so uh, that was it. Um, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, it's a bit of a different video to what I normally do. Like I say, it was not by any means a perfect uh, demonstration of kata. Um, so I, I know there's plenty of mistakes in there. Some that I haven't even highlighted on this video. Um, so, but that isn't the point of this video, right? The point of this video is for me to kind of go through some of the points of the kata that are important, all right? Um, I'm not brilliant at kata. Uh, I'm not bad at it. I did all right in my last grading with it. Um, and my wife did as well. So, um, you know, we've, we've both got things to improve on. Um, but that's what training is for, right? So, uh, I hope it was useful. Uh, let me know what you thought if you like this sort of thing again. Um, we would like to do a, um, a more in-depth instructional video on kata. And I certainly will do that as soon as I'm able to. Uh, thanks for watching today. Today. Thanks for watching today. There we go. <laughs> uh, I'll see you on the next video. And don't forget to support the channel by shopping at Kendo Star. All the best. Bye-bye.